Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We are on the Table Topper Sampler from my book, The Tantalizing Table Toppers. Uh, we have Secret Lives of Color. I've got another autumn sampler. Plus, you've got to see my website today. And another update from Norma and Nanette before they leave Jane. This is the last update when they're with Jane, and it is a doozy. Oh my goodness. We're doing that at the end. Okay, first let's do tantalizing table toppers. We are at the French Bistro. So there we go. This is a table runner and we're doing one block from this for the sampler. I had so much fun with this one and my friend Cindy quilted an amazing, amazing design on it. I'll see if you can see it here, but you can definitely see it in the book. So, you know, check it out in the book as well. I'm wondering if I can figure out what design she used. And uh, remember, Cindy is my friend that passed away, so I can't ask her. But I will see if I can find what design this was. I'm thinking this might actually be kind of interesting on my midnight moon. I just had that thought when I was looking at it. I was like, oh, that might be really good. Okay, so what does my block look like? Totally different than that. Totally different fabrics. There we go with birdsong and the solids. Now I do have quite a process of thinking through, even for this one simple block, what fabrics to use. So let's go ahead and do that on the other side. So I put the French Bistro up here so that we can look at it and talk a little bit about the colors. But I have to tell you, I was pinning this up there and I had two pins in my hand. I was having a bit difficult time getting this one in to the quilt behind it. like and I dropped the other pin, which I've been doing lately when I have two pins in my hand and trying to fiddle with one of them. And I can't find it. It's like weird because I just dropped it straight down and I can't find it. And I took the bowl, you know, that has the magnet and like went over like there's a little rug down here in a rubber mat thing, but I, I don't know where it is. Can't find it. Anyway, I digress. Does that happen to you? Tell me in the comments down below. Okay, what about the colors here? You can see that you have to have a pop, like this little like bow tie part here for the French Bistro. Uh, it needs to be high enough contrast so that it doesn't get lost amongst the other fabrics. And this particular, this was a fabric line and I really love this sort of acid green in there. So for the full runner, you can see it's repeated, repeated, repeated. It's got it in the plaid. Uh, it is in a lot of the fabrics that are the prints, but the actual stronger visual of, of a more you know, from this distance, more solid look, is repeated all the way through. Because if you don't repeat it, and you just have it in one here, maybe one down there, your eye is going to go focus on those and sort of lose, lose its way. So it's better to have it repeated all the way through. Now for the sampler, we're just doing one block. So that gives you a different perspective. And as we're going along here, I'm using the solids. So once again, I'm going to use solids and intermix them with the prints from Birdsong for the sampler block. So let's see what we got. And I'm doing pink because I'm alternating to get that coloration of pink blue all the way around the quilt. So this will be a pink block. And I pulled a bunch of the fabrics that have pink. Oh, here's another wipe in, I forgot this one. Um, and with a, they're a skinny strip. So one of the things about a skinny strip with uh, something like this is that you know you're you're going to not see as much of it, which is fine. Um, and you need six fabrics. So I do want to use, and I'm thinking, oh, I could use some of the green. I could pop some green in there. I don't know. I'm thinking, but I've got the solids. So there's pink. So definitely the pink. Now you could just right away do something extremely, uh, you know, I would call it safe. <laughs> you need six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you could do this coloration. Maybe I would move if I was going to do this. Okay, I wanna balance big prints and small prints. And so let me do like this. And then now we have a bigger print and then something that reads a little darker and then here so that would be I would do it more like this so separating these two so that your eye doesn't clump them and make them look like one unit one two three four five six and this one I could mess around and move it but if I was going to leave it in there then I could be really um, safe or you know meet your expectations of what that corner up there will look like you know the corner the little bow ties what these would look like. 
Of course, if I did it in this pink, totally, totally popping. It looks really good. Uh, but what if I want to use some other fabrics in here too? What if I want to mix it up? Because remember, there's four of these units and you don't have to keep them identical. Even though it's one block, you could keep them identical. That would keep it simple. It would be fine. Uh, on the original, I mix them up so there's no pattern to them. They're all sort of more, a little bit more random. So what if I was going to do this? Then I, if I was going to put some yellow in, I would want the yellow next to one of these. So let's see if we take this stripe out and put the yellow there. And then what if we took this pink out and put the pink in here like this? So that, and remember, they'll be repeated then. So I would maybe move them around, um, maybe shift them. Like if I was going to do the next one, I might just shift these three. Well, that would kind of just be, you could just turn it. <laughs> I think that would work too. Or you could just shift it like this. So it was on the end and move it around. And I'm going to cut mine and show you that after they're cut. But this is just kind of visualize this. So what if I wanted to do a little green in here? Like this still needs a corner. So the green could be the corner. It could be the little bow tie. It could be the green. And that would, um, you know, and you could do it with the solid or with um, the print from the line from Birdsong. So either one, the green could work. Now, if I was going to try to put green in the block as well, I would probably remove the yellow and put the green because then I think it's like a little bit more cohesive and then use the yellow as the pop for the, the bow tie. I'll just stick it there. You can see it. And I actually like this. I like this using the pink and the green in here. Uh, and then maybe I would do two with a solid and two with a print of the blocks. Okay, I'm gonna cut all this and then we'll look at it before I sew it. Here's an initial draft of everything laid out. I have it on the design board because I can just take this then and go over to the sewing machine. So this is the, the sorted order that I had laid out all the way from here to here. And then you can look at this print is down on the bottom. So I basically just took that unit and reversed it. So this is the same fabric and that's the same fabric. And then what I did here is I took this unit and rotated it this way. And I took this unit and rotated it that way. Um, maybe this one should have been rotated this way. I'd have to, I have to play around and see if I want to do that. So this is using each of the units as the order. I'm not rotating them around much. I could if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to go ahead with this. You could play around with where you have the stronger images. Like if I wanted them more in the middle, you know, closer to each other, <clears throat> I could do that. I could switch them so they would be closer to each other. In some ways, I kind of like that where, let's see real quick and see what we think. So this is switching that the two stronger images so that they're a little bit closer in the design. So, and then I just auditioned the yellow by taking the square and a pin, not the one that I lost. I don't know where it is yet. And just pin them down so I can see, yes. And I like the, the yellow popping off of there because it's really nice and strong. So I'm going to sew up these. I will lay them out once again, just to be sure how I like it. I might rotate this unit this way so that I have light and the light is in the center and then we'll see. I have all the units sewn and they're identical. I decided because it's one block, it's just gonna be easier to make them identical. So let's look at how we could lay them out so that they are fabulous. So, okay, oh, that one's not quite sewn yet. I took lunch break. Okay, so we'll just put that one there. <laughs> so you have to rotate them. So if I rotate them uh, so that they're kind of the same. So this fabric is here, this fabric is here. The light fabric and the light fabric. So there would be where they're sort of uniform. I've got the fab, well, this goes here too. This fabric goes like this, uh, this light one, and it goes horizontal and then vertical. Um, and do I like that? Maybe not. So I could do this. I could switch it so that the inside 
is basically the same fabric. Well, basically it is the same fabric. And then the outside edge is the same fabric. And for the, this particular fabric combination, I like this best. Now I will be putting our little uh, bow tie. So let me just pin him on here. So I have to put him on opposite sides. It's not going to matter which ones. What I'm looking at actually is what do I want to cover up and what do I want to leave in the middle here. So I like this flower with the heart in the center of it. Do you see that? See that there? So I don't want to cover that up, which means I have to do the opposing sides, uh, which works out pretty well. So I like that. And this will be the layout I'm going with. And I'm happy that I put these closer together. I think visually for one block, maybe even for the whole table runner, if I was doing all of this for the whole table runner, I think that that would look, re that looks really nice. Okay, sewing it up. It does, I, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, if I was even going to do a whole table runner of this, I wouldn't even mind just keeping it the same because there aren't as many different fabrics uh, as there were using the fabric line that I did here. So I had more options of fabric when I was doing this one uh, than here. So anyways, let's put it up. The French Bistro, if I can reach over there, goes on the top left. And the, remember when you look at your layout, Oh, can I reach it? Yeah, it's probably crooked, but don't, don't say anything. Okay. <laughs> so there we go up there on your layout. There is a checkerboard. Now you could use a really pretty fabric or something like that, but there is a checkerboard here that will do for a spacer, but I'm not ready to decide mine at all. I want to wait until I have more blocks done. I might, I might have an idea after I do the top row. Um, that might give me an idea of what I want, um, but I may end up just doing that after I do all of them because I have to decide whether I want like maybe a cream alternating with a print or whether I want to do maybe just the solid, something mimicking what I did the stripes here. You know, just repeat that because repeating design elements is really powerful in your quilts, particularly I think when you're doing samplers, it helps pull everything together. So that's another option. Okay, so what do we have? Secret Lives of Color number 64. We are still in the brown section. And today it is umber. And umber is a very old, old dye. Uh, it says it is uh, the oldest, is one of the oldest known pigments uh, out there. There's a really f uh, interesting story. It turns out that um, back in 1940, there was a kid in France, Southwest France, and he and his dog, Robot, uh, we're sniffing around, you know, running around as kids do, and um, his his dog uncovered like a hole, and so this kid went back and got his friends and flashlights, and they went down in this hole and found this big cave inside. And a lot of the types of inks and pigments that will have survived that kind of treatment were things like umber. So it's also a bunch of other stuff in here that you can read today for umber. And I found mine's probably a little dark but it's got a B on it, so I had to have that one. Uh, just, ah, oh, so umber is probably a little bit lighter shade. Like I'm having to sort of, you know, fluctuate a bit with my density of the colors. So they're maybe not quite the, the same um, shade as the book, but I'm okay with that. So this is, this is now, we're getting really close to, uh, ne next month is the last month for blocks for Secret Lives of Color. All right, the other thing we're going to do is uh, talk about my, the, the last cross stitch um, that I wanna show you. It's another um, holiday cross stitch, it's for Halloween. So let's take a look at that. The last uh, fun cross stitch that I wanna show you that the Fat Quarter Shop has and is you know hosting kind of for the, holiday, for the fall holidays, the fall time, is their Type, typo, topography, there we go, topography. And they have done a whole series of this where the patterns have words. So the word text, and I just love words. And you wouldn't even have to do all of it. I mean, you could just do a section of it. It could be put on like a little pillow you, like you could decorate with or a little banner. Um, you could just do parts of it. Uh, it is so darling. So let me show you everything. Uh, and this, oh, wait. This one is a PDF, so you can order a PDF and just instantly start sewing on it. They do have a super cute Halloween bag. Uh, I have this one and I love it. So it's different. This is a cloth one versus those pl plastic, more plastic mesh ones. And what else do we have in here? 
that they're showing us. Oh, all kinds of goodies. We've got, of course, the if you want to do the topography, uh, exactly spookogram. Is that Spooko spookography? There it is. Spookography. <laughs> These are taxing words for me. Um, so there you go. You've got a kit of threads if you don't want to use your own. They did it on almost like a pure white. What well, says white? So it's a white uh, 14 count is what that's stitched on. They have wonderful floss biddies, which you can wrap the floss on for Halloween. There's the super cute pumpkin needle minder. Let me get it down there so you can see it. I love that one. And the ghost. Oh my goodness, I love the ghost. And that's a pool, so you can put the ghost here on your, put the ghost here on your um, zipper and pull it back and forth. You can put it on your jacket, you can put it on your purse, you can put it on your car keys. This guy is so darn cute. I've put it on my phone. My phone has a place to hang like, you know, decoration. So I put a ghost on there. So this is a really wonderful um, kit. Well, you can just buy each of the things separately. You don't have to buy it together. But I love, I love the word text. Super cute. <laughs> now what you're going to do, and I'll remind you again right at the end, is that you can go for all of these. Let me get them. Uh, the, we have the one with the sunflowers, which was the autumn, had the house and all of that in it. We have the, um, the package with the support group. The support club this one and then today's and i am going to give each one of these away to somebody so there's three of them i'll remind you again before we finish but i just had to tell you that because it's so exciting you're gonna I enter at my website today all right i have a q a it's a follow-up from what i talked about the other day on labels so the first question was from zippy zippy and she wants to know what do you put on your labels and uh, I have a whole article on that, the whole article. So the link is down below and at my website today. Uh, it is, a, it is here, I'll do a screenshot. It's at my Sew Along website. There's lots of good information there. If you just go and look around, you'll find lots of cool stuff. So what do you put on your labels? Your name, the date you finished it, the location you were when you finished it. Uh, did you quilt it? Who was the designer um, of the pattern? Um, if somebody else quilted it, put that they quilted it. Uh, are you giving it to somebody? Put their name. And when you put your name, put my, you know, Pat Sloan. I'm not going to put Aunt Pat because years down the road, somebody might have more than one Aunt Pat and they don't know where it came from. Um, you might put your phone number or your email, particularly if you're mailing it. So those are some of the things that you put on a label, but you can go see that list over at my website. And then Lynn asks, what size were the squares? So here's the one that I have, I have to still stitch it down. It's just a square folded over and tucked into the corner. I have a whole tutorial on how to do these as well. Um, but I, they're anywhere from maybe five to six and a half inches maybe four and a half if it's a really tiny piece, but you have got to write on here. So you have to have some room. And if you're doing like I am and you're folding it in half, that's only half of the space. So think about this, think of a square. You're not gonna do a two and a half inch square. That's way too small. And you don't wanna have like maybe a 10 inch square, you know, like a layer cake, unless you have a lot of information. Like if you're getting other people's names and that would be appropriate, you'd have to have a bigger square. And remember mine's only half the size because I folded in half. All right, drum roll. <laughs> All right, so I was super surprised when Jane wrote me and said, you're never gonna guess what happened with Norm and Nanette. Now, Norm and Nanette went from me to, well, Norm left here, went to see Kendall, our ambassador, and met Nanette. Well, he already knew Nanette by emailing her. So they got together and fell in love and got married and Kendall arranged their wedding. And then they went to visit Jane, uh, who is my really super good friend. Uh, so Jane uh, lives just north of Kendall in Australia. And so Jane has been hosting them and she wrote me and she says, you're never gonna guess, Nanette had a baby. Oh yes, oh yes, here is baby Bob. <laughs> Nope, I had no idea. We did not know that gnomes have babies very quickly. They sort of just do this fast. <laughs> and, and we had no idea that if you have a baby boy gnome, it comes out with a full beard. So there you go. We now have Norm Nanette and baby Bob. This is Bob. 
<laughs> Bob the baby, and they are all now on their way to me here. So they're going to come visit me, and then after this, they're going to go on a next stop because what they're doing, Norm, Nanette, and baby Bob, are traveling around to visit a lot of different friends. Well, they happen to be my friends. <laughs> And they're going to be going all over the place. And every stop that they go to, our friends are going to host them. And uh, we will get to see what they do. And this is going to take a little while, just like this part has. I mean, it has to travel and then do the things, send, you know, and, and then we'll share it. And then they have to pack up and travel to the next place. So this will be going on for a little while. Every, you know, couple of weeks, you'll see, see them and their adventures. So I would like to send a huge congratulations to baby Bob and Norm and Nanette. So is, he's kind of cute, isn't he? Don't you think? <laughs> okay, my friend, you're going to make your block. Where did I do, what did I do with it? Up here. Your French bistro. Make your French bistro block. Ta-da. And I, am, I can't wait to see it. Show all of your... Um, blocks if you can when you show your your bistro that'd be really fun to see where you're going or at least if you have done this part I know a few people have been sharing this but if you haven't sewn that middle up yet you might be ready and you could do that remember head over to my website and one of these will go to three of you all right I love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the Sloan zone and send best wishes to Norm Nanette and baby Bob I'll see you online.